kululewa mi wenu ya zi so mubanja wenu ya ya zi wen kululewa wenu ya zi so mubanja wenu ya zi wen kululewa so you know something can start as an idea or a feeling that you have and then when you when you bring the people together and you realize that actually there is alignment there is a need for 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 what i've been feeling that i'm not the only one um and so starting to put together this tribe of eco warriors for me is a is a combination of really a massive dream that i've had I'm Makosi Amanda Kabashe and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the Natural Heritage Alliance and the aim of this uh, non-profit is to amplify the marginalized voices within conservation. For me it's about how do I start breaking down the now historical walls between us as healers and what I call cultural custodians and the culture and nature and environment because we will be on the face of a report about poaching of plants you know over exploitation and all of that and we never reflected as actually having an active role to play and actually are playing in efforts to conserve when you speak conservation in south africa it's a white male voice you know white male voice while white male face and yet we are there and so my question is how do i start bringing the people that i know are very much part and parcel of this back into the mainstream of the conversation to the point where we are actually able to lead conversation the disconnect between us our practice and the natural environment nature is massive so how do we start bridging that and really reintroducing what others take for granted to everyone make it accessible in a small way we've been able to be supported to be able to start bringing this as an initiative together and that for me is something that I'm I'm grateful for this is how we are here now it's it and it's an opener right it doesn't start and end here the wilderness era is very important because it's where we preserve nature it's where is not changed it's still the ancient life out there so when we when we bring in traditional healers to this to this place we need them to f- to smell and to feel the power of wild the power of lion because th- we we believe that they have those powers of wild animals but they never walked where the wild animals have walked so we give them that, that opportunity to just bring back those kind of strength within themselves and we want to show them the importance of conservation so we want these traditional healers to play a big role in the, in their communities to spread the voice of protecting these wild animals my big grand vision is that uh, for all initiatives for all cultural practitioners that this is something that becomes available to them practically how are we going to start being visible and active in conservation the trail is not just about spending five nights out in the wilderness only which is critical because there is no spiritual person who will not tell you that they have dreamt or seen any of the big cats they have spiritual significance for us and so this is an opportunity to cement that that it's not only happening in an esoteric and 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 dream state but also in the reality and in the hopes that that also ignites our connection back to nature from which our practice comes our healing is rooted in our cultural practices in our natural practices in that um the stars and the moon all have significance for us and they still do it's just that uh, the modernity and the way we live lives mean that you now see less of that as a healer than you would in fact even as the starting your initiation is that there are people who go through a whole initiation process spend time 
are being initiated in particular lineage and never ever step foot in, in a wild space. This is about bringing back that reconnection. My name is Nana Ingilosi Kamakanya. Ingilosi means angel. For me, this is a journey that I need to take. I'm not doing it for myself, as much as I'm doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for the generation before me and the current generation and the next generation to come and the nation as well. So yeah, I feel, wow, I don't know. I don't even have words to explain, but I think I'm getting what I came here for. We feel energy. Spaces like this are really powerful spaces. They're energetic, they're strong spaces. We walk with reverence in them. And if you've never had the opportunity, it's a massive hole and a knowledge gap, actually, that you miss because it's understanding what is this energy that, that encompasses all of us. And so this is what part of this journey is about. Our belief system says that we understand that in some way or form we will come back. And the question has to be asked, what are you doing to make sure that you and your future generations still come back and find yeah. spaces like this? <laughs> we need to now rise above uh, being focused only on our silos and our lineages and start looking at the issues of conservation is our issue. Uh, without a conserved, thriving, natural world, does our practice still exist? It doesn't matter what lineage you come from, how long you've been a healer, at the end of the day, what sustains this ability and this practice and it's being passed on. And we do need to be able to start coming together over and above uh, those issues, creating a tribe of healers who are bonded by the understanding that uh, we are custodians of the natural environment. It's about commonly, nature is ours. And how do we take care of her the way she's taken care of us? Sugela is all when I was doing the night watch, the, the winds were, were, were changing me in such a way that, you know, making me feel that you are back home and we, we're glad that you're here. So I am so, so emotional today. The next time I come back, I'm coming with, you know, the people that I live with so that they can share the joy that I've experienced. It's just me saying, I'm going to see you later. You, you, you don't have to seek material things to make you happy or close the void. You have to be one with nature, with creation. And that has happened for me. So I'm just, yeah, see you later. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to walk where my ancestors walked. The highlight of my whole trip was to walk in the Mfolozi River, to bathe in the Mfolozi River. Water is, is a very important part of my life. And this is one of the greatest rivers that we have in the country. And to have walked in it, not alongside it, not at the edge of it, to walk in it across for me was highly phenomenal. When we came here, we had backpacks. They were very heavy. And yesterday, when we walked back to camp, it was very light. Spiritually, I came in here carrying a lot emotionally. Over the days, the load has lessened. Actually, it's gone. I'm very, very light. Even coming up here to this point again, it's light. It's way too light. So it's not the backpack that was heavy. It was me, not the backpack. So we're grateful, we're grateful to each and every person who impacted my life, to my growing. As we learn every day, see to us how we are learning, we're grateful to learning more and the opportunity to be here. So until we meet again, so I love and light.